Modern India is defined by an incredibly diverse culture made up of 25 states in seven territories with the people speaking 18 major languages and practicing seven popular religions across the country. This incredible subcontinent lays claim to a vast and varied array of cooking styles, spices and culinary philosophy. Welcome to the exotic cultural flavors of India. Home to more than one billion people, the subcontinent bristles with an eclectic blend of ethnic groups. This translates into an intoxicating cultural and culinary experience that can take a lifetime to discover. I think I was about nine years old when I first made chapatis and they were all shapes and sizes and they were like biscuits. But my dad ate it because he wanted me to cook and he said, oh, you should learn to cook. So he ate the chapatis and said they were very tasty. So I think from that we encouraged, encouraged me to start cooking. Many Indian recipes often include the key ingredient of garam masala, Contrary to popular belief, garam masala is not a spice per se, but rather a combination of five or six different spices that are often added to dishes to intensify their flavor. The exact spices and quantities in garam masala differs greatly according to region and personal taste. Whole spices are usually ground in a mortar and pestle and blended together. In Hindi, garam masala literally means hot mixture, yet chilies do not feature as one of the key ingredients, and the garam masala blend should be intensely spicy rather than hot. A garam masala mix includes a range of spices. Black or white peppercorns feature commonly, as do cloves, which have a strong and bitter taste and should be used sparingly. Cardamom comes in two varieties, Large black cardamom seeds display a strong flavor, while the smaller green cardamom seed is sweeter on the palate. Star anise is always a key ingredient in any masala mix, and it's easily recognizable for its unique shape. The flavor of this exotic spice resembles that of anise, fennel, and tarragon. Coriander seeds, which have a lemony citrus flavor when crushed, are often mixed in generous quantities with cumin seeds as part of the spice blend. In the northwest of the country, cinnamon is usually added to garam masala combination. This spice, which is derived from the bark of a tree, is very versatile and can be used in sweet and savory dishes. Indian bay leaves are always added for their distinctive fragrance and flavor. Commercial mixes of garam masala are available from any supermarket, but anyone with a real sense of adventure will not regret blending their very own. Across India, meats are traditionally roasted in a tandoori oven. For those of you that don't have access to one of these, a barbecue is a very good alternative. Tandoori meats are first marinated with yogurt and garam masala and ginger and garlic and lemon juice. You can use either uh, prawns or fish or chicken or lamb and it's cooked very quickly in this hot clay oven, uh, bringing out some very nice moist uh, dishes which are beautifully roasted. You will need a few simple ingredients to make a traditional tandoori mixture. Get organized and prepare your paste well in advance so your lamb cutlets can absorb the recipe's exotic and aromatic subtleties, preferably overnight.
Add two tablespoons of ginger and garlic paste to a medium-sized mixing bowl. Add some of the juice from one lemon, then add one to two tablespoons of your favorite garam masala mix. Around half a teaspoon of red tandoori powder will give the meat its intense red color once cooked. Scoop in three tablespoons of Greek-style yogurt and two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Now grab a spoon and thoroughly mix all the ingredients together. Your tandoori mixture is now ready to be added to the meat. At this stage, it's a good idea to wear gloves as the tandoori mixture will color your hands just as well as the meat. Take your lamb cutlets and place them in a large mixing bowl. Scoop two teaspoons of ginger and garlic paste over the lamb and add the rest of the lemon juice. Add around one teaspoon of chili powder plus a teaspoon of salt and thoroughly massage all these ingredients into the meat. Now add about six tablespoons of the tandoori mixture that you have prepared earlier. Rub the mixture into the lamb well and ensure that all the cutlets are covered. Place the cutlets onto a plate, cover and store in a refrigerator for at least four hours, although overnight is best. This allows all the flavours of the spices to penetrate the meat. Instead of a tandoori oven, we're going to use a barbecue to cook the marinated lamb. Preheat the barbecue to a very high temperature and place the cutlets onto the hot plate, allowing them to sizzle in the rich marinade. Once they start to brown, turn them over and let them cook for another few minutes. Cooking the meat on a high heat will blacken the marinade in places and cook the outside of the meat well, while still keeping the cutlets tender and juicy inside. When ready, place the cutlets on a bed of lettuce, serve with a simple salad made with cucumber, red onion, tomato and coriander. Finally, garnish with a wedge of lemon, which can be squeezed over the cutlets just before you enjoy them. Still to come on Cultural Flavours, India. We spice things up with an authentic style curry with Punjabi influences. Breads are eaten everywhere and mainly used to scoop up the main meal, especially in the Punjab region. We have different types of breads there. We don't eat too much of rice there, it's mainly bread. There's uh, naans, there's bhaturas, there's chapatis, which I made today. There's parathas, there's uh, stuffed parathas with, you know, uh, methi, which is fenugreek leaves. We, we love our bread in India, we eat a lot of it there. To create authentic Indian chapatis at home, you will only need a few simple ingredients to create your dough base. First, place your flour into a mixing bowl, add some water and then some oil and start mixing it with your hands. Work the liquid through the flour, forming a dough and add more water as you go until all the flour is picked up by the dough and it becomes slightly elastic. Make sure you knead the dough well. It should be malleable but not sticky. Then leave it to rest for 20 minutes. Take small pieces of dough and roll them into small balls. Coat them with some reserved flour, then work them into a disc with your hands. You can then roll them flat and thin with a rolling pin, adding flour as required to prevent the chapati from sticking to the pin or board. Place the rolled chapati on a floured plate and continue until you have used up the dough. When you have all your chapatis prepared, heat a griddle plate or non-stick frying pan until it's very hot. Don't use any oil though. Start cooking the chapatis on the hot griddle until they puff up. Then turn and cook the other side, pressing lightly around the edges with a folded tea towel. As each one is cooked, wrap in a clean tea towel until all are ready. 
This prevents them from drying out. To serve, lightly spread with ghee, which is clarified butter, chapatis are generally served as an accompaniment to curries and vegetables. The southern region of Goa is famous for its fiery seafood curries and this prawn curry is typical of the region. It's hot, spicy and its intense flavours are the result of combining numerous ingredients. It's not a difficult curry to cook when you've been cooking. It has a lot of ingredients. You have, uh, you have whole spices that you use and then you use the curry leaves which are also from South India and Goa in that region. And then you use uh, other spices like curry powders which we blend ourselves and uh, turmeric and chili powder and things like that. And then you use ground stuff, grind, grind onions and whatever. Like most curries, the secret is to start with a good curry paste. Combining these ingredients in an electric blender is a quick and simple way to make a great base for your curry. For those of you looking for a truly authentic Goan taste, liberally add more chilli and vinegar to your curry paste. The second stage of this recipe requires a vast array of spices and other ingredients. So it's important to ensure that you prepare everything well before you start cooking. We're using green prawns with their shells intact, but you could use any type of prawn. Goan prawn curry is usually enjoyed with basmati rice or eaten with breads such as chapati or naan. To begin, place a chopped red onion into your blender. Add two long red chilies and about three tablespoons of cooked white onions, four peeled cloves of garlic and two tablespoons of tomato paste. Next, add two tablespoons of white vinegar three chopped tomatoes and half a red capsicum, chopped. Finally, pour about one quarter of a cup of water over all the ingredients. Now blend everything together until you have a well-mixed liquid paste. And put this to one side until later. To prepare the curry, heat some oil in a pan, add your star anise, cardamom, cloves, cinnamon stick, fenugreek and mustard seeds to the hot oil. Place a sprig of curry leaves and two diced onions into the pan, then stir well. Take some ginger and garlic paste and stir around two teaspoons into your curry base. Pour in around half a cup of water and mix well. Scoop a spicy mix of turmeric, curry, chili and coriander powders onto your onion base. As they cook, these spices will release their aromas and their flavors will intensify. Season with a teaspoon of salt then reduce the heat and mix the ingredients well to form a thick paste. Now is the time to add your blended curry paste to the saucepan. Mix it in well to allow all the flavours to combine. Cover 
and allow to simmer until the juices have cooked through. When ready, add a tablespoon of yogurt to the sauce, as well as one tablespoon of taramand paste. Then pour in half a can of coconut milk. These will help to bind all the ingredients together into a rich creamy sauce. Take the juice of half a lemon and add it to the sauce. You can now add your prawns to the curry and then bring the sauce to the boil once to cook them. Remove the saucepan from the heat. Sprinkle three tablespoons of fresh chopped coriander and stir. Finally, cover and allow the curry to stand for five to 10 minutes before serving with basmati rice. India produces more lentils than any other country in the world. These pulses are packed with high levels of protein as well as many essential minerals and vitamins. They are inexpensive, extremely nutritious, highly versatile and considered by many to be one of the healthiest food sources available. The most popular variety is Mong Dal. Commonly mixed with rice and sometimes with vegetables, these lentils form the basis of many very simple but healthy meals in India. They are so highly regarded by some Indian doctors that they are even prescribed to help with many stomach ailments. Black Erd Dal is very popular, especially across the north of the country. It forms the main ingredient of Dal Makhni, the most characteristic signature dish of the Punjab region. Made with cream and butter, the dish takes over eight hours to prepare. Very tasty and nutritious, dal makhni is usually accompanied by rice or served with freshly cooked chapatis. The white variety are simply black eard dal with their intensely flavoured shells removed. These are often soaked and ground to make delicious donuts, which are very popular throughout India. In southern regions such as Kerala, cooks use tur dal to create samba, a spicy soup made with vegetables and tamarind. These small split chickpeas are chana dal. They have a variety of uses, not least as an ingredient in the crispy papadam, a favourite accompaniment at most Indian restaurants around the world. Lentils and beans are indispensable to Indian culture, revered for their pure and gentle digestive qualities. No other dish is more central to Indian cuisine than dal, a flavoursome traditional classic. Dal is actually a staple all over India, not only in the north. All over India, everybody eats dal. It is actually the poor man's staple food really, but uh, we always have dal with whatever you cook you have in it. From north to south, dal in all its forms is central to Indian cuisine. Although dal seems like a simple dish, the preparation and complexity of its ingredients comes as a surprise to many. With a little time though, anybody can create a delicious dal at home. What gives this Punjabi Masoor Dal its amazing flavour is the traditional spice paste, bursting with a classic combination of spices that produce aromas that will transport your taste buds straight to India. Although once limited to a very select few, all these exotic spices can now be sourced directly from your local supermarket. Firstly, take your red washed red lentils and place them in a medium sized saucepan. Add the water to the pot, then stir in your turmeric powder. 
salt, a dash of chilli powder, the garlic and ginger paste, a dash of fenugreek seeds and a tablespoon of oil. You can find garlic and ginger paste in most Asian grocers or simply buy them individually and combine them yourself. Chop the fresh chilli and add it to the ingredients along with the diced tomato. Give it a good stir before placing on the stove to boil for about 15 minutes. This part of the preparation is very quick and dal is a great dish to prepare if you're short on time. While the pot is bubbling away, you can prepare your spice paste. Finely chop three cloves of garlic and dice an onion. We're actually using the sweeter Spanish onion here. Put a small pan on the stove and heat up your vegetable oil until it begins to smoke. When the oil is hot, add a pinch of fenugreek seeds, cumin seeds, mustard seeds, curry leaves and diced garlic. This all needs to be done quickly to avoid burning the ingredients while allowing the flavours to release into the hot oil. Add the diced onion and give your paste a stir, coating the oil over the onion. This will slow the cooking process and now you can work a little less urgently. Next, add a couple of teaspoons of garlic and ginger paste, coriander powder, curry powder and some chilli powder if you like. You can reduce the chilli if you prefer, cooking to your own tastes. Add a teaspoon of ghee and quickly stir it through the paste. The aromas should envelop you as the spices and butter mix in the hot pan. By now your dal should be cooking nicely and a large portion of the water will have been absorbed by the lentils. Stir the spice paste into the dal on the stove top and mix in well. Keep it on the heat while stirring to help the flavours combine. Lastly, finely chop some fresh coriander, stalks and all, and add it to the dal. Keep a little aside to use as a garnish when serving. Now you too can prepare a traditional Punjabi masur dal, a delicious authentic vegetarian Indian dish, rich in flavours and good for you as well. Now that we have revealed the simple yet spectacular delights of Indian cuisine, considered by many to be the most varied and exotic of all cuisines, we hope that we have inspired you to explore these flavours for yourself. Cultural Flavours continues to explore the world and its cultures through the diversity of food. From India to Italy, Greece to Africa, let cultural flavours take you on a gastronomic journey so you can experience the tastes of the globe at home. <laughs>